Item number one is a communication from the mayor relative to the appointment of Ms. Samantha Millman to the Affordable Housing Commission for the term ending June 30th, 2019. Okay. Um, do we have cards? Public yes. comment? Okay. Let's hear from Patricia McAllister, Wayne Houseman, Antonia Ramirez, and then we'll hear from Michael Millman. Yes. Please. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Patricia McAllister, and uh, I'm here. I'm a very concerned citizen. I did uh, attend the Lhasa Homeless Count uh, meeting a couple weeks ago and discovered over 90% of the homeless are African Americans. And somebody have to speak up for black people. Yes. Because we get these, I'm not putting the blacks down in here because, you know, they can do so much, but they need Thank to you. do more. Thank you. They sit on these committees. <laughs> Skid Row, and it's not funny, Skid Row is filled with black people. They're sending black people, you can be a teacher, a counselor, anything, PhD. If you're black and you need some food, they send you to Skid Row. Mm -hmm. That's discriminatory. Um, this housing issue here, I'd like to know what's the racial breakdown of the commission. I don't know if everyone's here. How many African Americans, and, and is this lady, Samantha Millman, is she African American? Okay. Um, for the record, the uh, nationality breakdown is included in the mayor's report on this item. Okay. Thank you. Shall I continue? No. Uh, How many minutes do I get? Uh, your time is up. One minute for the record. Thank you. Okay. Next is uh, Mr. Hausman. How are you? All right. Getting the houses, yeah. Um, yes, uh, that's a good point. Um, Samantha Millman, uh, she may not be black. What is her race? That'd be interesting to find out. Also, um, on this uh, in this committee, are there any homeless people on the committee? Mm -hmm. Why don't you have one that's in the field, actual person that's affected by this? See, they, they, but they don't do that. And then there's no community impact statement, none submitted. So we don't have a completed vetting of the of the person here. So unfortunately, um, it'll probably just pass without ever having that done. And normally on the schedule, it should have the racial gender breakdown. We know she's from CD4. Um, perhaps we have a new councilman, the first Korean American. Maybe we should get David Rue's position on this in July 1st. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. This is a matter of principle. I sincerely hope that the appointment of Ms. Samantha Millman to the Affordable Housing Commission for the term ending June 30th, 2019 will be implemented with the utmost integrity, honesty, human dignity, due diligence, honor, commitment, and with respect and reverence to all Los Angeles City taxpayers. Moreover, that you help raise the moral, legal, and ethical standards of Los Angeles by honorably and rightfully housing, first and foremost, all our United States military veterans and pilots, especially those who are on furlough. Um, and again, most commercial airline pilots are military. And so I trust that your convictions will help prioritize the most needy of housing. Therefore, help clean up Los Angeles by putting all of our military veterans and pilots and senior citizens um, in a beautiful, safe, healthy, freedom-friendly feng shui home. And that is my, my hope, my sincerely hope, that again, we restore America, clean up America. God bless America and God bless the United States military. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Millman. Yes, uh, good afternoon, Council. Samantha Millman and I are not related in any way, but I can speak to her exceptional and extraordinary background and character. Um, many of you know my son works in the building. They were friends in high school. Jeffrey was shy. She was socially outgoing. Jeffrey's whole social life probably <coughs> is, emanates from their friendship. She was the epicenter at Harvard Westlake for social justice, reaching out to the community to provide um, leadership in that area. 
when she worked for housing providers, Mr. Chairman, um, she was a manager that always looked to fair housing principles. She is very well suited by temperament, by belief, by attitude and DNA to be someone, to be a leader in the field of providing uh, good housing for all people in the, in, in the city. Thank you for allowing me to endorse her. Uh, Mr. Chair, for the record, uh, again, the nationality of the candidate, Ms. Millman, is indicated in the mayor's report. The nationality of the of the makeup of the Affordable Housing Commission is also included in the mayor's report. <clears throat> and also, for the record, Ms. Uh, Millman has withdrawn her appointment from further consideration. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. So we will, um, absent any other public comment, receive and file the withdrawal. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Item number two is the Housing Authority of the City of Los Angeles and a CAO report relative to a request to the city for a payment in lieu of taxes waiver in the amount of $2 million. Good afternoon, committee members. My name is Aurora Abrasi with the CAO's office. Mm -hmm. uh, before you is a request from the Housing Authority of the City of Los Angeles to waive payment in lieu of taxes in the amount of $2 million for 2015-16 to provide summer jobs for youth living in public housing and to support the transition of recreation services at four public housing developments to nonprofit entities. The city has historically consented to reimburse the city for the value of municipal services provided to HACLA housing developments. And the city has previously granted waivers of this payment to allow these funds to be used uh, for services that benefit residents or for capital and infrastructure projects at various housing developments. One million of this request will be used to directly provide summer jobs for approximately 600 youths living in 14 housing developments as part of the summer youth employment program. The remaining one million would be used by HACLA to directly fund nonprofit organizations to provide recreational services at Nickerson Gardens, Imperial Gardens, Jordan Downs, and Ramona Gardens. These services are currently provided by Reckon Parks. Our office recommends approval of this pilot fee waiver request, and we, as well as representatives, a representative from HACLA, are available to answer any questions. Okay. Mr. Brown. Good afternoon. My name is Eric Brown with the Housing Authority of the City of Los Angeles. Uh, we uh, concur with the report the CAO has put forward, and uh, we encourage your approval of this report to move forward to assist us with the youth uh, for the summer program. Um, I noted for the programs, but I have other housing projects in the uh, district. Um, so do they participate in this? I've got... Um, Mar Vista Gardens. What's it called? Mar Vista Gardens. No, 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 what was called Dogtown. Mar Vista Gardens. I don't think it's Mar Vista Gardens. It's, uh, I'm sorry, not Mar Vista. William Mead. William Mead, exactly. Yes. William Mead. Uh, do they get to participate in this? What Absolutely. So uh, William Mead will receive 28 jobs for the youth. We have 102 children or youth that l reside in William Mead. And uh, out of the 600, they will get... 28 jobs that we'll provide. Okay. Similar question, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Similar question for Pueblo de Rio and for Avalon Gardens. Yes, so for Avalon Gardens, we have 42 youth that reside in Avalon Gardens, and we will provide 12 jobs for Avalon Gardens. Uh, we have 219 youth that live in Pueblo de Rio. And the 600, we will give them 61 jobs for the youth. And these are roundabout numbers, roughly. Uh, and how are these, how are these uh, youth going to be selected? First come, first serve, or based on something or something? Or? Uh, it's, it's usually first come, first serve. They will apply for the jobs, and our work source development group will interview them. And they also connect them with the employment of the jobs and give them training before they go out on the jobs. And these are jobs within the agency? Uh, some are, yes, yeah, some are within the agency and some are with private companies. Uh, and what we do is typically teach them uh, life skills before they go out. And also uh, they are uh, prepared to have bank accounts as well for the jobs. So we teach them how to do their own banking as well. 
We have a financial partner with that, or is something that? Uh, in the past, I think that financial partner was Wells Fargo. I'm not really sure who it is this year, this summer. Great. We did this last year, right? Yes. We do this every year. We've done this for the past three or four years okay. with the pilot funds. Good. Um, Senator, any other questions? No. Okay. Thank you, guys. We're ready for public comment next. Right? Thank you. That's correct. We have cards on this item. Yep. Uh, Ms. Jalsman. And Ms. McAllister. Patricia McAllister. You're, you're using the funds to provide jobs, mm -hmm. not housing. Two million dollars could go a long way. Why don't you get two million dollars worth of leases and take homeless people and put them into apartments mm -hmm. with the two million dollars? That's what you're supposed to do. Provide housing. This is not providing housing. This is providing jobs and bank accounts. Uh, you ever open up a bank account lately and all the fees they charge, you don't even know which bank it's going to be. Wells Fargo is one of the worst with, with, with that. So you know, you're going to provide $2 million in waiving payment of taxes, then why not allow homeowners to take their property taxes, waive it, and buy a lease or two for some of these homeless people. Let's get people into housing mm -hmm. directly. That's what you should do with the money, not this. Yes, you also... Yes. Having taught seven years in LAUSD, the school district, I'm a computer scientist, degree in computer science, teach math. I know that there are millions of illegal aliens, and I'd say Yes, illegal aliens. Don't try to uh, tell me how to pronounce them. An alien is someone foreign to the land that they're on, and they are foreign. I know that these kids who are getting this money, he said himself, 61 Del Rio. Okay, 61 kids, 28 uh, in Mead, and 12 in Avalon. We need to stop financing these illegal aliens. That's who's in the affordable housing. Black people are on the street and in Skid Row, and the illegal aliens are getting the housing, the education, uh, funds of this nature, and everything else. And this has to stop. My great-great-great-grandmother was born in slavery. She lived 106 years old. And you're not going to just crush black people in this country, and especially not here in California. We're going to speak up for black people who are on the street and being abused. And you, sir, Sedilio, we can vote you out of office. So don't get a big head, okay? Thank you. So, uh, Senator, uh, you want to speak in favor? Uh, we need a motion to train and provide jobs for uh, young black men and young black women and young Latino men and young Latino women. I'll so move, Mr. Chairman. I'll so move. Okay. Well, <coughs> good. So be the order. And um, for the record, uh, are you approving the recommendations also in the CAO report? Yes, we are approving those recommendations. Thank you. Item number three, Los Angeles Housing and Community Investment Department and CAO reports relative to authorization to apply for the California Debt Limit Allocation Committee for an allocation of bonds in an approximate amount of $30.5 million for a mortgage credit certificate program. Okay. Hi. How are you? Good, good. Uh, Nick Campbell with the CAO. Uh, okay. Thank you for having me, Council Member. I am Tim Elliott from HCID. Good afternoon, Gloria Torres, Los Angeles Housing and Community Investment Department. Thank you for being here. Sure. Okay. Go so ahead. The item before you is a request from housing to apply to the California Debt Limit Allocation Committee. Um, for an allocation of single-family mor uh, mortgage revenue bonds. Uh, these bonds will be converted to mortgage credit certificates uh, upon receipt by the city, and they'll be used to um, assist uh, first-time home buyers who are qualified as low and moderate income first-time home buyers with federal income tax credits. Okay. Uh, this, this item will have uh, no impact on the general fund, and uh, our office is in concurrence with the uh, department's recommendations. And I'm here with uh, representatives from the department if you have any questions. Okay. Sander? Uh, I don't have any 
questions? So given that the uh, May 15th date has passed, uh, are we okay uh, moving forward? And then talk to me a little bit how we do the outreach uh, on this. How do we notify home buyers and lenders when these funds are available? Well, the deadline to apply, we're, we're shooting for the July 17th deadline. Mm -hmm. That's the CIDLAC uh, deadline. And their, uh, their hearing will be September 16th, so we're on track to meet that deadline. Okay. We promote and market the program by sending email blasts to all lenders, realtors, other real estate professionals, home buyer educators, the nonprofits that we work with. It's a citywide program. It's very, oh. it's a citywide program. It's very popular. So we market it that way. We go to home buyer fairs. We go to other community events, and but it's primarily done through the lenders, participating lenders, and realtors and home buyer educators. So you, you have to have a broker then, or can you just? Yes. Um, if a broker to go through the program? Yes, an interested home buyer would have to go through a participating lender or broker. Mm -hmm. Okay. Senator? I'll move approval. Great. Okay. So be the order. Thank you. Thank all of you for being here. Thank you. And that would be the oh, uh, recommendations have, in the CAO report. Yeah, we have public comment. And we have public comment. Yes, let's hear from. Antonia Ramirez. Thank you. This is a matter of principle. I am troubled and dumbfounded, and I quote, to assist, and I quote, to assist low and moderate income individuals and families to achieve home ownership in the city of LA. End of quote. We say no. We oppose the 30 million. $552,813. This language is vague and ambiguous and naturally infer wetbacks and Latino chango gangbangers because it says nothing about homeless military veterans or pilots who are on furlough. Again, legal law-abiding citizens who are now a homeless population, but I guarantee you that the illegal felons, because they are wetbacks and broke the federal law, should not be housed anywhere, not even in shelters, because as the late Supreme Court Justice William Rehnquist said, and I quote, they have no legal standing in this country, end of quote. So again, we say, first and foremost, you house all military veterans, regardless of their color, if they are uniformed or ununiformed, active or inactive, including pilots, you house them. Thank you. Time is up. Mr. Hausman. problem with it is you got to have brokers and tax credits this is, this is silly and then who gets it it's whoever's on the know you put in the application whoever knows about it gets it it's not a, it's not available widely so what you have to do is prioritize who gets these funds and it should be homeless veterans that's who should get these funds first now, when you buy the house, you've got to be able to afford to pay the mortgage on the house. So moderate and low-income people have a, have a very high risk of losing this. So why not give part of this money to senior citizens who are paying their mortgages but are on fixed incomes like Social Security? Senior citizens who are in danger of becoming ho homeless should get these credits as well. Thank you. Patricia McAllister. Okay, well, I'm back to the illegal aliens. My problem is I have the housing is being occupied by criminals. When you break into a nation and you don't have the right to be here, you're a criminal. They're in our affordable housing. And this committee, this mayor, this state is doing nothing. Governor Jerry Brown welcomed them, told them they're welcome to come on in, even though we don't even have water to, to shower with almost. Okay, so we've got to do something. We'll start at the grassroots right here with our alder people. Get some of you council members out of the office, out of office. I'm from Chicago. We call them councilmen or women. We need to, uh, aldermen rather. We need to get some of you out of office, especially these Hispanics who are here representing illegal Hispanics and legal ones. So you encourage them to come in and break into our nation. We've got whites. I've got photos of them. Whites sleeping on the street in these tents. Blacks 
and the illegal aliens, you can barely find a, a, a hundred of them on the street. They're near affordable housing. Uh, thank you. Your time is up. Okay. Councilman, I would recommend that you take your action now the public comment is complete. Repeat your action. We're going to do our action again. Um, so, Senator. Your motion on with item three. Motion on item three to move forward with this great program for uh, we'll move. working men and women in the great city of Los Angeles. Happy, happy Thank you so much. We'll move it in oh, and again, that would. You and I both voted on while we were in the Senate. I think so. And again, that would be the recommendations in the CEO report, sir. That's sure. correct. Thank you. Item number four. Housing and Community Investment Department and CAO reports relative to the 2014 Lead Hazard Reduction Demonstration Grant application and authorization to implement the new grant and ensure continuance of HSID's Lead Hazard remedi Remediation Program. Okay. <clears throat> Sir, welcome. I'm so happy to see you and you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Brett Avershaw from the CAO. Uh, in September, to the record, you guys want to introduce yourself? Oh, yeah. Lisette Romero Martinez with the Lead Hazard Remediation Program. Bienvenido. Sergio Tejadilla with the Housing and Community Investment Department. Bienvenido. Thank you. Uh, in September 2014, HIDEA was awarded a $3.9 million grant from HUD to continue their Lead Hazard Remediation Program. Uh, the primary purpose of this program is to remediate lead hazards in housing units occupied by low income households with children under the age of six. HID is requesting authority to implement this grant, known as Lead Grant 11, and continue resolution authorities on 10 exempt positions. Uh, the period of performance for this grant is from uh, December 1st, 2014 through November 30th, 2017. HID is also requesting to release an RFP to select contractors for the purpose of conducting program outreach, education, and training. This office concurs with HID's request to implement Lead Grant 11, continue the exempt positions, and release an RFP. I'm here for any questions. Okay. Sounds like an excellent program, Senator. Yeah, typically, how do we, uh, do we've identified a certain number of units in certain places, or people call in, or organizations refer. How do we identify where these? It, will, it works both ways. So we actually go out to um, home ownership. We do a lot of outreach through the nonprofits in the community. We have uh, council districts that we have identified as high risk due to the uh, pre-1978 housing and children under the age of five in those communities. And we do outreach through those communities as well. Um, we also do outreach through the landlords associations. Uh, we also go to health fairs. And word of mouth has been actually the greatest right now. Um, we also get a lot of referrals from our court enforcement. When they go out there and they see peeling and shipping paint, they also refer those units to us. In addition to that, uh, we also get some referrals from the Department of Health Services uh, where children with elevated blood levels have been identified. This is federal money. This is federal money. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great. Uh, public comment? Uh, yes, sir. We have three cards on that item. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. Antonia Ramirez. We adamantly say no, no, no. Lead hazard reduction demonstration grant. This replay of the aforementioned grant is LA's runaway theft shenanigans. Put a stop to this treachery. It's fraud. You either remove the lead in the most of these old and obsolete buildings and or demolish the bloody buildings because it appears that the only ones who are benefiting from this lead replay scenario each year are the bloody wetbacks and Latino chango gangbangers who end up hiring their co-conspirators legal aid or housing rights or public law center or the ACLU. Those are the true legal scumbags who gouge money out of the LA taxpayers and with the blessings of the LA city attorneys and council members so they can party and screw us out of money from the general funds and therefore replace the general fund with grant money. Again, this unofficial public malfeasance will only sink us deeper into dire financial straits. Stop this misappropriation and commingling of funds. Have integrity. Have ethics. Stand up for what is right, just decent. Thank you. God bless America. Your time is up. Thank you. Mr. Hausman. Uh, 
Uh, so let's see here on the tally board today. We've given away 35, $36.4 million of money, and we haven't bought a single lease on a single housing unit for a single veteran or a homeless senior citizen. That's a hell of a lot of money for no leases. You got to wake up. Get there. Get these people leases. Put them into housing. Thirty, forty million dollars can buy a lot. You can you can put them in Marina Del Rey for two thousand a month. You can buy a lot of leases for two thousand a month with this money. Not one dollar is going to a lease to put somebody in a home that's homeless. That's the shock of this. Everything is being done except putting a roof over people's heads. You're not doing it with any of this money. That's why, that's why people are outraged. Senator, are you prepared to approve the CAO's report with this great program of... Oh, Linda. Linda Kite, how are you? Yes. Uh, good afternoon. Um, first of all, let's just be really clear. 3.9 million comes from HUD. I want you to know, maybe you don't know, at the federal level, actually, the city of Los Angeles is the um, highest performing mm -hmm. and actually kind of sets the bar really high for the rest of the country. Many of the innovations that we've uh, conducted here in L.A. have now been replicated nationwide. So kudos to everyone that supported that. The Healthy Homes Collaborative has actually been par uh, collaborating with the city of Los Angeles and particularly the housing department for about the last 15 years on this uh, stream of funding. Until recently, we accepted contracts ourselves, but really it's community-based organizations based in the communities that have the cultural competency and the deep, deep uh, roots in those communities. They're the ones identifying the high-risk properties. It's a drop in the bucket. We're doing maybe 200 in a grant cycle when there's over three-quarters of a million units that are built before 78, but we do what we can. What this grant really does is builds the infrastructure for the city to do the private sector remediation as well. Linda, thank you so much for being here today. We do this. Senator, prepared to um, adopt the CAO's report? All right, excellent. Thank you so much. So be the order. So be the order. Thank you. <laughs> Number five. Housing and Community Investment Department report relative to authorization to release the request for proposals for the 2015-16 Handy Worker Program year. Yes. Program year. So we're going to move to continue that to the next meeting. Item number six, Housing Community Investment Department report and CEO report relative to the results of the Neighborhood Improvement Fund request for proposals and authorization to negotiate and execute contracts with the successful city departments and nonprofit organizations selected through the RFP. Okay. Let's hear from uh, HCIP. Good morning. Nick Campbell, CAO. Or good afternoon. Excuse me. Introduce yourself for the record. Good afternoon, Ed Gibson from Housing Community Investment Department. Uh, Sergio Samayo, Housing and Community Investment Department. So the item before you is a request from Housing to utilize uh, community block development block grant funds in the amount of 4.7 million dollars allocated to the Neighborhood Improvement Fund for 23 projects selected through a request for proposals. Um, additionally, the department requests authority to negotiate and execute contracts um, and memoranda of. Uh, understanding um, with successful proposers. Uh, these funds will be used. Oh, sorry. Um, the recommended actions um, would not impact the general fund um, as they are provided by CDBG funds and our office is in concurrence with the department's recommendations. And I'm available for any questions. Senator? Um, no, I'm just uh, sorry that we don't have more funds to uh, allocate in lots of Program to organizations sort of apply. It's like a thorough, thorough process. 
I'm prepared to support the recommendation, Council. What's your reason? What's your, uh, with respect to the Senator's concern, what are your thoughts about getting additional funding? Um, what's the prospects for that? Uh, could you tell me about projects that weren't funded, that might have been funded? All of the projects that are listed there, we have the funds that were in program year 39 and funds that are program in 41. So at this moment in time, there are approximately 24 projects total, 23 of which are available for funding. Any project that wasn't funding doesn't meet that threshold, either was not eligible or didn't meet the minimum funding threshold in order to go forward, which means it didn't have enough pieces in place at this particular moment in time um, to be ready to move forward. So the upside is um, there was allocated funds that we could reach all the way down the list as we have, which is good so we can get more funds out to the community. Um, and those that unfortunately weren't able to make it this round, it's, some of the limitation is either eligibility or the fact that they weren't in the full readiness status necessary for the application process. But we could easily do this process all over again. I will admit it is a lot of work. Sergio has spent a great amount of time on this. But um, hopefully it gets us quality projects in a timely manner. And that was the goal. Okay. We have uh, public comment. Uh, yes, sir. We have three cards on this item. Yes, we have Patricia McAllister. I I'm concerned about Wayne all. Wayne and. You taking my Antonio time, Antonio Ramirez. Okay, um, I reset it. Okay, okay, thank you. I'm concerned about these kickbacks. You know, I see this money flowing all around. Most of it's going in your. Well, I don't want to say your pockets, but the politicians' pockets, and these illegals. Let me explain something to you, sir. Uh, I think I'm pronouncing it right, Sedilio. You, you tend to turn your back and play around and laugh while we're speaking. We're the ones who put you in office. Now, only 30% of the citizens are even voting anymore. They're so disgusted with these politicians. So it wouldn't take many votes to get you out. Now, remember, now I can, I can set up a commission and get you out of office. Only 30% of us voting. So you all are more vulnerable now, so you better act like you have some sense, okay? You're a public servant. You don't work for the, uh, uh, you know, the, your, these other people out there. Now, let me explain about the neighborhoods. You go out in the Jewish community out there, Fairfax and all out there. Beautiful neighborhoods. You come on south, trash all over the place, dog mess and everything else. The Jews don't run this town, okay? Everybody should be able to get their neighborhoods and paper and, and whatnot picked up off the ground and clean and those sidewalks fixed. This is not a Jewish country. This is America. Time is up. Thank you. Let's be forthright, shall we? Let's conduct our city uh, businesses with the highest moral, legal, and ethical standards without politically pandering to anyone. When you say results of the neighborhood improvement funds, what results? We live in a stench-filled society filled and it smells like urine and feces all over. Even our tourists are disgusted in Hollywood and, and the observatory. All the surfaces and, and streets and beddings and walls and transportation and restaurants are full of MRSA, scabies, bed bugs, staph infections, meningitis. That's shameful. I'm embarrassed to have a tourist come to this country, let alone my own home. I would disinfect everything and fumigate LA with Lysol and bleach. Welcome America in Los Angeles with a beautiful aura, a smell. Clean up Los Angeles. Give it a nice, smooth air. Fumigate it with incense. Welcome them with freedom, friendly, kindness, and wonderful smell. God bless America. Time is up. Yeah. Well, more of the same. Uh, we're going to give uh, money to third parties. And then those third parties are going to give it to their friends, and then we're going to do RFPs. And when you get done, how many of these veterans are going to be put into these housing units? There's too much of this uh, of this go around. A lot of these other you, you continued five because you don't want to talk about it. it's job programs. It's not housing. Housing is putting roofs over people's heads that don't have them. That's you, you're not doing the core function. You're running around the, the outside of it. So you, all of this has become a slush fund. There's not a single lease. I mean, in this whole meeting with all of these millions of dollars in items, we can't find a single lease that has been bought for a homeless veteran, 
a senior citizen, or a displaced person. Not one dollar. And that's the problem we have here. Your time is up. Thank you. <clears throat> Senator, prepared to pr uh, approve the report and prioritize funding for one project in CD7. <coughs> Just to, to elaborate a little bit, one of the projects uh, did not get fully funded. There weren't funds all the way available. So if that could be prioritized, yes. that would be um, fantastic since it has met the threshold. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Yes, it is. Okay. Thanks. So it will be the order. Okay. And for the record, sir, that would be the recommendations in the CAO report. That's correct. Thank you. Okay. We have... General public comment. <laughs> General Jeff. Oh, here you go, brother. <clears throat> Good morning, committee. Uh, my name is General Jeff, a uh, proud Skid Row resident, community, Skid Row community activist. I'm here before this committee because. Uh, Obviously, you know, there's the, the, the new homeless count numbers came out, and as you all know, the homelessness is up 12 percent, and I, I still don't think that's an accurate number because when I move around not only in Skid Row but throughout the city of Los Angeles, I see in camp, homeless encampments in areas that have never been there before. So I, I don't know how accurate that count is, but on, on what, for what it's worth, we'll take it at uh, 12 percent. Uh, we, we're anticipating that this committee uh, will have a a strong say so in as as when this ad hoc homeless committee comes on point because we definitely need more uh low income affordable housing and so I just want to let you all know that we will be coming to this committee to uh have input on that matter and just for the record uh I know personally that you uh, uh council member Cedillo have done a wonderful job in in preserving a lot of affordable housing income for a lot of folks thank you thank you sir Patricia McAllister? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wayne Hausman. Yeah, we're going to be Thursday night at 6.30. There's going to be a special police commission meeting, which um, will be in CD12. And I never see any of these projects they, in CD12. I think that uh, Mitchell Englander would be happy to have some, some homeless services in his district. And they should put some of these affordable housing units in Porter Ranch, Granada Hills. There's a lot of extra housing there from the, from the housing bus that's available. Should go in there and, and purchase leases and put these people in those apartments because you're going to get people off the streets and with a roof over their head so again they can you can you can ask Mitchell and I'm sure you know he'd be more than willing to do that you know even you know to take some homeless people and put them into CD12 and I, I think they'd be welcome there there's a lot of housing there thank you Antonia Ramirez We can all thank the unethical chief of police, Charlie Beck, the LAPD, plus the legal hacks, including the whistler back there, and the attorneys and judges for perpetuating chronic homelessness of all law-abiding citizens, plus our beloved military veterans who became victims of crime. Yes, there is a large segment of homeless population that are victims of crime stemming out of housing, where LAPD and officers of the court fail to cure 100% of the crimes, i.e., gang stalkings, toxic noise pollution, property damage, criminal trespass, theft, invasion of privacy, vandalism, gang Bangers, home invasion robberies, mail and ID theft, uh, wet back mob lynchings, etc., etc. Furthermore, denied you the right to file a police report, a valid one, failed to honor a citizen's arrest and or make a lawful arrest, and no investigations or follow-ups ever done in landlord-tenant cases. Furthermore, unethical attorneys who fail to perform their legal duties and leave you holding the bag and never return your uh, retainer and consultation fees. These legal scumbags drove only further helped uh, victims. Thank you. Patricia McAllister. 
Thank you. I, I, I saw a homeless lady on the street yesterday, and I was pulled up to the light, and she was at the bus stop with all of her stuff sitting there, and I gave her a thumbs up. And I don't know why I gave her a thumbs up, and she looked at me, and she did like this, shook her head. I said, these people are real. They know what they're going through. She shook her head and no, it's to tell me no thumbs up here. We need a federal investigation of all residents in affordable housing. We need to know who's legal and who's illegal. If they're illegal, we need them out of this housing. That's what the problem is here in America, not just California, in America. Now, I know that might be difficult when we have a president in the White House who's trying to get 5 million illegal aliens job permits when 175 million are unemployed. We need to start with that fool, okay? But I don't know who he's answering to, but thank God he'll be out of office very soon. But we're going to start unelecting some of you career politicians who've been in office 25, 30, 40 years. You think this is a game? We're going to put you on the street. Your time is up. Mr. Millman. Thank you. Um, I can't follow with that theme, but I, bring I, I have a, a sane voice. Uh, I don't know if it's sane. Not, you have to check. You with bring my, us a sane voice. It's doesn't not. Believe uh, it. But to make a long story short, when, or ignorance. when your agenda permits, whenever it might be, uh, housing providers would like to see two items go on your agenda. We support living wage or minimum wage increase. But we just wonder out loud, when the plumbers get an increase, or the roofers, or the gardeners get an increase, and we're capped at 3% per year, that's going to be a big hardship on the mom and pops. We also want to see some same courage and leadership that we saw from the chair when we got um, people who are undocumented, their driving privilege, which we complement the, the courage of the chair. We'd like to see some of our tenants sometimes cause problems on the unit. Maybe they should get a warning or ci citation. Um, so those two items we'd like to see on the, uh, on the agenda. Thank you. <laughs> that, it? Uh, that clears the desk, sir. Is that it, everybody? Okay. Well, we are done for the day. Everybody have a great blessed field day. and. This concludes the Housing Committee. This is only the Housing